pastor was telling me that wonderful testimony. Pastor, just share that if you don't mind real quick there. Well, I, I shared with you about Larry uh, Sunday morning. And, you know, all I can say is, uh, you know, it just amazes me how God moves. I mm -hmm. know we, we were praying for Jeff and everything we got, but still just need to remember Jeff. Yes, he had, we do. Uh, surgery on the fourth. Oh, yeah. But anyway, Larry was uh, having a heart attack. Now, Larry had a, a, a heart uh, uh, bypass, and they didn't bypass one of those. I don't know why. It's about 40% they didn't bypass it. So uh, they were looking at that. Plus, he failed his, uh, he failed his stress, stress test. test. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they were looking at other blockages. They were checking that. But that's what I had it in my mind. But anyway, he failed the stress test. So when I went in there that morning, he said, you don't have to come. And, you know, I, uh, sometimes I don't go for a heart test, you know. Mm -hmm. So this was no morning, no different from any other morning. But I said, Larry, when I got in there, he was telling me about his blockage. Golly, he's got a blockage. No gate spin it, all this kind of stuff. I said, well, I'm just going to pray for no blockage. I said, I come all the way down here. We might as well go to no blockage. And that's where I put it. And uh, and so I prayed and I prayed that way. And when he came out of there, he didn't have no blockage. So I praise God for that. But that's not the whole load. And when Sunday morning after I told that, he was standing out here in the foyer and he had tears in his eyes and said, Well, tomorrow that's just part of what happened that day. I've got to tell you about this. He said, uh, uh, You know, those. Those little cubicles in there, and I couldn't see who was in there. And 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 there was a guy from Dotson there who knew me. I still don't know who it is, but they, after he come out, he said, "You need to." He he went and told Brooke, which is Larry's daughter. Said, "You need to tell Brother Lamar when he prayed." He said, "I definitely had blockages. I had they were going to put some stents in." But I agreed with Brother Lamar. I heard him praying over there, and, and I know that if he would have. Uh, no, when I was over here, he would come pray for him, but I disagreed with him. No blockage. And he said, uh, when I come out of there, I had no blockage. When they got in, I had no blockage. Now, nobody can explain anything, but we know what happened. But I just praise God. For Amen. That. You know, I pray for a lot of people. It didn't turn out that way. Yes. So uh, all I know is it turned out that way, that way, and I, I just praise God for that. And, you know, Richard reminded me something Sunday morning. You know, and I'm sitting in here talking about I got diabetes again and I'm on medication again. Instead of saying, well, you know, I, I, back then I, didn't, I wasn't eating right. But, but God reached down and healed me. But it don't take long to you get back on the boat where I got diabetes and all this kind of stuff. And, I, you know, the doctor still got a doctor. But, but, you know, God said by his stripes I'm healed. All Amen. I'm saying is we've got to start standing on that Absolutely. again. I'm just like everybody else. I get down in the mouth. And start speaking death instead of life. So, whether you got it or not, just say, by his stripes and heal. That's a lot easier. That's what the Bible says. Amen. So, anyway, isn't it powerful? powerful yes. Like isn't it powerful yeah, that the Pastor Lamar is praying in one room, you know, it's, it's the cloth walls, you know, in there and whatever, but they hear him praying and the gentleman agrees with right. him, with that word. There will be no blockages. It's not in the human. It's in the power of his word. Yeah, you know, I really did have, I wouldn't say I had great faith that morning. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But he put I, great faith in what you were saying, yeah, said, which was the word of God. I said, yeah, we're going to, we're gonna, when Larry said it, I said, no, we're just going to pray right. the word of God. That's right. That's what the word of God was. I'm here, we're going to pray the word of God. That's no right. God. That's right. So, so that's the thing I want to tell you, all right? Is that not amazing, the power of God's Word? He watches over His Word to perform it when a person believes the Word. And when we simply share it, we're faithful to share it. Pastor said several things there. Didn't feel any, uh, uh, you know, great anointing. It wasn't a special morning. He didn't go down there going, oh, God's going to do. He went. He was faithful. He did. He released the Word. He released His faith in that way. It was the connection of those people with that faith that produce that in, the, in, in their lives as well. It is the fruit of his mouth 
the fruit of our mouth, the fruit of your mouth. I'll tell y'all something else. It's just some testimonies to encourage your faith tonight. When we think God isn't doing great things sometimes because the enemy will beat us down and we'll think that. Do y'all know, I don't know if I want this recorded, but, um, but I'm going to share it. It's kind of private. But he said it in public. It's the only reason I'll, I'll say it. He said it at this altar. Brother Johnny, you just heard the report that he's doing well. Do you know what he told me at this altar? Thank you, brother. Thank y'all for praying, whatever he said. Thank you, thank y'all, whatever. I don't know. But he said this. He said, you know, I've been thinking I might just die on the table. But I'm ready to go. Well, he didn't die. And he is doing better. So that's a long way from death. But I don't know if he said that to you, but probably you being like his best friend. Yeah, me and, me and uh, Brother uh, Terry talked to him, and he, he told us both. He said, I don't care if I die, you know, whatever. I was like, no, you're going to live. Yeah. I did the same thing. Now. I said, I drive all the way down here. <laughs> For you to die. I'm going to get down here, but I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. Amen. Gonna Amen. <laughs> so God's been very faithful. Amen. I say God's been very faithful. Amen. Amen. He, yeah. Here a while back, you know, I was praying for the sick this morning. Uh-huh. That uh, Alice Burnett died. Yeah. Uh, I've been talking to her, you know, just the lady that works with her. She come up and said something to me about when it gets down in the day of church, you know, I've been trying, you know. Uh, so I talked like a sailor, you know, I mean, just to be firm for a while. Yeah, I understand. And uh, I give her one of them papers, who I am, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I sit there, I guess, probably an hour with her. I was supposed to be working, but you know, I don't. Mm-hmm. And uh, she uh, she's into the she she got it in her head, you know. Well, the Bible church by me in this mm-hmm. this yeah. church, you know, they've done oh, yeah. changed this, they've done did this, they yeah. they didn't get hell in until. Yeah. And, you know, just making all kind of excuses. I said, well, I said, you can, and she's into the science, what the science says about all this. Oh, stuff. yeah, yeah. I said, well, you can either believe that or believe the Bible. I mean, I, I mean, that's, that's left up to you. Mm-hmm. I said, but uh, uh, if you get down, just sit down. I said, I'm not no Bible scholar by no means. I said, but if you just want to come over, sit down. Got questions? We'll look it up in here. I said, I said, I, said I, I know two, I know three people right off hand that if you if you want to talk to them, I said, brother Randy, brother Lamar, I'm sure they'll come to the house anytime and we can sit down and talk. I said, you see, brother Richard's coming to get you. And I told him. take time, I bet you, and if he, if he ain't blocking nobody and ain't in nowhere, I bet you he'll pull it over <laughs> and tell you what you need to know. But you just flag him down and ask him whatever you need to know. If he, he's bad at it, you know. Yeah. He, That's her inner mind. Break my heart. Her mind. Her that went to the dentist. And her mind's getting all twisted on all the sort of stuff that she's reading. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah when he said, said that. Like, but I told Terry, I said, when she told you, Amen. Well, God's working on people.
Well, God's working on people, church. You need to you need to kind of be aware that, um, you know, like I said, sometimes some it, it's just I'll just leave that there. God's really working on people's lives. If if we uh, if we have prayed, if we pray, you know, um, we're we're seeing that, you know. If I could just say, well, yeah. I'm saying, now's the time because just like Justin, uh, Justin, uh, what's his name, Justin, Danny said, Danny's uh, nephew. Yeah. Danny's last name. Ferguson. Ferguson, yeah. <laughs> Danny Herman O'Neill. It's taking me a miracle to do that. But anyway, you know, Justin, I went over to their house and talked, and it wasn't anything, just, just talked about the Lord some. And, you know, we had prayer. Mm-hmm. He wanted to give his heart to the Lord. We had to go back to work the next day, and he calling me up saying, I can't go back to work uh, until I get, get baptized. Back to I'm us. going back to work Wednesday evening, so he, he got baptized That's right. that day. That's right. So that's just Amen. Don't take much. Don't take much of anything in the Lord. She's got questions that I don't know, but it's just like, uh, you know what? Uh, how did God do it? Yeah. Well, she just needs to, you uh, know, God's got to an answer for all them things. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> So, I know, yeah, I know that there's not answering that question, but, you know, I know other people that God's dealing with right now. You know, um, you know, we had said some time back about uh, God doing a work in our family, uh, Marsha and I, and, and we have seen God do that. And uh, Sunday, if y'all saw one of my other boys, Colby, here with us, Colby has not darkened the church door since probably his mother left. Um, when, when, as she was raising them, I said, why aren't you taking my kids to church? And she said, oh, that's up to them. If they ever want to go, they can go. I said, now, you know good and well kids ain't going to wake up out of the blue and say, hey, it's a Sunday morning. I think I want to go to church. And so, um, so he came Sunday and, uh, you know, has dealt with a lot and with his mother passing and everything, um, you know, he, he just told me, went home, and he told us before he left, and he uh, told me, best day, one of the best days I've ever had in my life. Praise God. And, uh, you know, the enemy uh, comes immediately, not, you know, an hour later or two days. He comes immediately. So it hit him about that night, some things in his life and everything, and he, he gave, sent me a negative text. And I just sent it back, and I said, son, I told him that, the truth. I said, you know, the enemy comes immediately. And I said, you know, we love you. God's got a plan. You know, just stick with the plan. Don't back up now. He texted me back. He said, Dad, I loved it Sunday, and I'll be there every Sunday. Praise God. Amen. That's a miracle. Mm-hmm. Our mind tends to focus on that. Rather than. And yeah. we tend to forget about. Focus. Yeah. Yeah. We tend to forget about Brother Phil's sister. Yeah. We tend to forget about the lad. Mm-hmm. The guy beside Larry. That's right. We tend to forget about the. Clients or whatever his name. Yeah. The 15 that we yeah. baptize just about every Sunday for the last two months. Yeah. That's what the enemy does. That's correct. That's right. Focused on. Focused on negativity. Yes. And we, we miss what God's doing. That's right. That's right. And that's kind of like Pastor was saying about going to the hospital. Funny thing is, church, is that when, when you and I may feel like giving up, God's still working. Yeah. Amen. It's not based on your emotions, my emotions, how I feel today. God's like, I'm always working. I mean, you might be wanting to quit, but I'm still working. You know, he's still drawing people. He's still healing. He's still loving. He's still caring. He's still, you know, sending the Holy Spirit to quicken, to, to reprove, to correct, to, to strengthen, to give grace, to give mercy. He's always working. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's the kind of stuff that we need to be discerning about. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's not even a 
That's great. Yeah. It, it is. It's a. I won't go down that road, uh, you know, like I could get on my soapbox, but last week I saw three people that I greatly, you know, respect and, and you know, in some manner, right, in ministry. And all three, same week, different parts of the world, country, saying, God help us with what's coming out of the pulpit. Three. And I was like, Father, you know, we don't sometimes realize, you know, what the body of Christ is being told in some places and by some major influential people. But we need to continue to pray, church. But God's doing things. Amen? Amen. Amen. God's doing things. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be where God's doing things. Hallelujah. Another young man, my last little testimony, just uh, again, just just encouragement. Um, couple in the church that's been coming, uh, some, I won't uh, specify a name, but uh, they said they wanted to counsel with me, and I thought, you know, is it maybe marriage or, you know, what, whatever it was. And uh, he's got a background where his family is a fifth generation Mason. He knows nothing about the Lord. You hear me? This is from him, not from me. This is his testimony. And so I said, you know, well, what counseling does he, you know, want? He wants to know about the Lord. Praise God. He, he wants God. So I'm believing y'all continue, you know, to pray. You see God's touching lives, changing these people that you would think would never come to the Lord, you know? Um, so it's exciting. It's, it's, it's crazy. God's doing some wonderful things, dealing with people's hearts. Hallelujah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Well, they got it twisted to where it happened to David just like it happened to Peter. I said, no, mm-hmm. I said, David, David was prophesying. I said, this mm-hmm. did not happen. I said, he was prophesying what was to come. Mm-hmm. And I said, if you want to argue with me about well, it. Well, here's I the said, thing. Not, yeah. I said, I'm not going to argue with you about it. But anyway, um, shortly after that was the time when my son got mad at me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't see me sitting over there in the living room, and all of a sudden, Patron says, "Watch your mouth, sweetie." Yeah. Well, here's the thing so is. She, so she went on, and she said, "Well, who does here now?" And I, by that point. So here's I, here's. I said, you here, know "Here's the bottom line." Matter. I said, "It don't matter who's here." I said, and "Please, by all means, don't apologize to me. Apologize to God and Jesus, especially when you apologize." But the bottom, bottom line is, is that where sin abounds, grace does much more. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So here's what I'm telling y'all with that statement. It don't matter how dark it looks or how bad you think it is. Stop being moved by your natural senses. Trust God. If He found you, He can find them. If He saved you, He can save them. If He delivered you, He can deliver them. Amen. He is not a respecter of persons. He's not a man that he can lie. He is faithful. And so my kids have been drugs, drugged in, drugged out, and everything else. God's delivering them all. And so, hey, at times I've been totally hopeless. Father is not without hope. He is not without a plan, and He's not an impotent, helpless God. He's powerful. So... Don't, don't take on the full responsibility to be their Savior. It's the one that hung on that cross. Amen. Amen. Let Him save them. Let Him save them. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles with me. I'm going to preach fast. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, Sunday morning in Sunday school, uh, 
think it was Sunday morning, Sunday school, Brother Rich, he uh, read some of these scriptures. And so if you were in Sunday school, I know some of y'all teach classes and this, that, and the other are not in there, of course. But uh, I'm going to take it a little further. Pastor even read some of the scriptures we've been going through on the heart message and things like that. So it's all kind of right there together. So, you know, here's the thing is, I, I really every week I keep asking the Holy Spirit, you know, I want to move to something else, do this, do that. Holy Spirit just kind of keeps me here. Um, I just want to try to reiterate the thing uh, again tonight is that um, as we look at this word uh, here in the Bible, um, you know, I lived, and I think, I think I'm saying everybody's story, so I'm not trying to give just my testimony. I think it's common with man that if we have a heart after God, if there's a desire within us to serve God, and if we ever give our life to, to Jesus, ask Him be Lord of our life, you know what I mean, to save us, whatever verb, you know, vocabulary, way you explain it, however, you know, you want to define that. Um... For some reason, you know, then it becomes paramount to all of us how we live as a Christian. You know what I mean? I mean, like in the church, we've tried to figure out and we debated and argued and fought over, are we saved by grace or is it by works? Y'all you, you know what I mean? Anybody understand what I'm saying? We're, we're like, okay, we got to do something. And others are like, no, you ain't got to do nothing. And so I know that we've gotten confused on our definition of grace. And, you know, we've talked about it. We may teach on that again uh, sometime uh, soon because I think it's powerful that we live by grace. Okay. That, that it's not perfection in that we're perfect within ourselves. It is He that helps us become perfect or like Him. Amen. And that's grace. Father is long-suffering and patient on my flaws. As long as my pursuit is Him. When, when I become defiant of His loving correction, I put myself in a bad place even with the Father. It's not that He turns His back, as Richie was talking about Sunday. It's not as though He turns His back on us. It's the fact that Father's whole uh, initiative, His whole purpose is the fullness of sonship in our lives. It's our development. It's our transformation. It's, it's not us trying to live a sinless life to prove to God or our spouse or to anybody else that we're a Christian. That's not what it's about. It's about loving God enough to say, change me, Father, Amen. to look like you. Amen. And so if our heart cry is that transformation that I can bring you glory in the earth. Um, Y'all know the scripture says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I was thinking about that today. Not that scripture, but that principle. And I said, I feel like Paul and he said this, he said, doggone it. When there's this thing I don't want to do, I find myself doing, and that thing I, I want to do, I don't do it. He said, I'm just fouled up. There's things I want to do, I don't do. Things I don't want to do, and I end up doing them. And here's the thing, church, is that I thank God that we're getting off of the condemnation. Amen? That Meaning that, you're stuck there and you're, you're broken and you're worthless. And, and, and I think our church is getting past that mindset. It's not that. Father still loves you the same. But for you to manifest His nature, His spirit, His power, His glory, the very essence of Himself through our lives, it takes our transformation to be like Him, not us changing Him to be like us. So when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. I'm just quoting Romans chapter 1, right? They brought His image down to that of a bird, a fish, a four-footed animal, beast, or, you know, some other thing. 
Instead of them saying they knew God and they glorified Him as God and they became like Him. Man has so long tried to change the image of God to make Him acceptable to us when we should change our image from Him to be acceptable and to reflect Him. You, you know what I mean? So if our heart's desire is, is to... All right, let, let me say it like this in just good, you know, simple terms. If you want God to be seen through you and your family, on your job, and everywhere you go, if it, th that means your heart is after God. God. That is all that God is looking for is a people desiring to represent Him in the Praise earth. God. A people desiring to commune and fellowship Amen. with Him. So in that anointing, in that, what's that, rubbing, in that smearing, we can't have anointing in our life without there being intimate exchange. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But we're in His presence. And He's rubbing us. To anoint means to rub or to smear. To impart. It does other things. But with those base things in mind, you cannot be in the presence of God in your car, in your prayer room, at your place, you know, what I mean, anywhere in intimacy with God. You cannot be in His presence and not be being changed. Praise God. You are being changed. Amen. He is imparting Himself Amen. to you. He is taking your carnal nature and giving you His divine Praise nature. God. Amen. Amen. It is a transference that, uh, you know, like, like John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that you can increase. The more that you decrease of who you've always been and wanted to be and thought to be, to say, Father, whoever you want me to be, the more you decrease and the more he increases. You could have a friend not see you for, for six months and see you and say, my Lord, you've changed. You don't even recognize it because the Father's transformation in your life. They say, man, you used to be this, blah, 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 but now you're totally different. Isn't that amazing? Yes. I mean, isn't that wonderful? Amen. Hallelujah. I remember one of the old country, uh, country gospel songs was, you know, uh, I'm not the man I used to be. The man you used to see, he's dead. He's gone. But isn't it awesome when our family see us or our friends and they go, they just know we've changed? Praise God. Amen. And it's not us putting on a religious facade or trying to be, you know, I don't drink, I don't cuss, I don't smoke, or, you know, chase girls that do. I don't do any. It's not that. It's that they see His image, His love, His presence. They see His grace, His mercy. They see, they sense His, they sense His spirit in your life. They sense something different about you, whether you say anything or not. Isn't that the fragrance of His presence? God. Amen. Amen. So tonight that's really what I'm talking about it, it, is that um, so many things happen when this process happens. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I want to start in verse 7. And I'm talking, preaching my way right through time. But it says, but if the ministration of death written and engraved in stone was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses... For the glory of His countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Stay right there if you would with the Scriptures. I want to focus for a moment. I'm just going to go down through this. I hope I have time. I really do. But uh, I want to talk about the word ministration first. Um, it's, it's a word, diconia. Um, that ain't going to work. Let's see if one of these will work. Diaconia. Um, there's a reason I'm, I want to show you this. is because um, diaconia comes from a word. Diaconos. Does anybody know what we get from this word? 
deacon. This is the word deacon. So this is deacon. All right, so then the root of both of those words is a word uh, dioko, dioko, dioko. This is the root of both of those. So it starts there. There's a reason I'm telling you that, not to just give you Greek words. There's a reason I'm showing you that. Here, here's why. Because, because they build one upon another to understand really what diakonia is. And so the word deacon here means to be a servant or to be a waiter or a waitress. It's someone that serves. It's someone that's in the act of service. Amen? Yeah. So, so when the, the wives and the children were not getting fed in Acts, they got they appointed deacons to serve them food. Y'all with me? De- deacons are servants. They're people that work. They actually are hands-on administering something. Now that's important. So um, dikos that they all start from, um, I'm going to give you the simple, uh, listen to this, it means to uh, pursue. It means to uh, follow or to give yourself to, even to suffer persecution. All right, I want, you to, I want you to see this progression so far. Someone who is willing to serve that will endure some bad things, even persecution, is able to serve. Amen? Amen. And then it goes to the last word, which means an attendant and, or, or something that will aid or help to bring relief or service. So he's saying, he's saying that... Uh, there is help available and there is someone to serve that can endure some bad things. Right? Y'all with me? And so he's painting the picture here of, of God sent His law as an instrument to do a job. I, I'm just trying to clarify the Scripture. And if that purpose of the law that brought condemnation, what does that mean? God sent His law for the purpose of serving as something that would condemn or bring judgment or correction to men's behavior. Y'all getting that? I mean, seriously, is that okay? And if that loving expression of God to first bring correction to His people, to begin to express to them who He was and His nature. If it was glorious, able to produce the presence of God, glory, the manifested presence of God. If God could manifest Himself in something that brought correction, how much more? I want you to get that revelation if nothing else tonight. How much more could you now have in the Holy Ghost who has not just come to bring correction but transformation? How much more should we have the glory of God? Thank you, Lord Jesus. The manifestation of God in our lives. It's not about condemnation now. Now it's about transformation. For time's sake, I'm just going to leave that explanation there. I wanted to go deeper and deeper. You know what I mean? Just by I think the Holy Ghost helped me, and I think that's it. I just want you to understand that. Now, when you look at all the rest of these scriptures, you're fixing to see how Father designed for you to be transformed by His Spirit. We're not under laws of condemnation to bring your correction. Now he said, I will forgive all of the incorrectness and by the blood of Jesus you'll be made right with me but I won't leave you the way I found you and now I sent my spirit to step inside of you and he will begin to correct everything and adjust everything. He knows how to serve. He is dicornia. He knows his job. He has come to assist and to serve. In other words, God's first instrument to be used was his law. The second one that he sent to be used was his spirit. And that's why if you go back to verse 8 for me, 
how shall not the ministration of the Spirit, the tool I'm going to use is my Spirit. Not condemnation, not the law. I'm going to use my Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me go on then. I can jump over a lot right there. Verse 10, please. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that shall excel. I'm telling you the ministration, what the service and impartation and endurance and purpose of the Holy Ghost will far exceed what the law can do. Verse 11. For in that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remains is glorious. Verse 12. Seeing then that we have such hope. Oh, stay right there a minute. We use great plainness of speech. I'm trying to speak very frank and plain. Here's why. This is our hope. This is our hope. The hope of your life changing into what God designed it to be and do you become something you didn't ever know you could be is all contained in that right there. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 13. Or chapter 4, verse 1, wherever I'm at. All right, no, you're good. Listen to this. Not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not step back and look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil not taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Listen to me. This is the heart message. Here's what he's saying is, is that there is a covering over their heart. There is a covering. There is a shield. There is a a wall between. There is a deflection of their heart in the Word of God are really not just the, the Word. It's not really that. It's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit. So he said they've come as far as they can come with the law. And then the next thing I sent was what? The new covenant, my Spirit. My Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Go ahead. That's a, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord. When what? Their heart. When their heart turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So here's what I'm telling you is, is that for all of us where the rubber meets the road, you might have read this a thousand times, but please hear this. It's what I said a while ago in my opening, that when your heart, which is what? Your desires, your passions, your cravings, your beliefs, your intentions, when they turn to the Lord, Whatever veil might be on your heart is removed. Thank you, Jesus. And so, listen, no heart turning to the Lord, no veil removed. Thank you, Jesus. So a person can sit there and say, well, I know, or I, I love God with all my heart, or whatever, and you can stay in that place wherever you're at right now. But if your heart ever, I'm talking about, again, I want this to be very clear and precise. I know myself when my heart is after God, and I know when it's not. I can simply ask myself, Randy, have you thought of the Lord today? Randy, do you desire His presence? Randy, do you hunger for His Word? Do you hunger for truth? Do you want to see a manifestation of His Spirit? Do you want to be used today in some capacity for the kingdom of God? Where's your heart at? What do you desire today? That is the reality of this heart message. It's that simple. It's not complex, really. The enemy may make it when we leave the building, but the fact is you can simply say, Father, where's my heart? Because Jesus said, they draw nigh unto me with their mouth, but their heart's far from me. And so the simple fact is when our hearts turn to the Lord, That's why with revival in the earth, a manifestation of the glory of God and all those things, it's not just our prayer, though a church should be a praying church. But listen to me. Praying church, praying people out of rudiment or necessity, or in other words, being told to, demanded to, out of religious routine, doesn't move God. 
but hearts praying that are passionate for Him move God. And so, so when you don't have to ask people to pray, but they say, I want to pray. I'm coming to prayer. I want to pray. Hey, I come up there four mornings all by myself because I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek His faith. I pray on my way to work. You know what I mean? I'm just saying it don't have to be at the church house. My point is, is when we pray because we're passionate and we want God and we want to see God move, we want to see Him touch lives. If church, listen to me, when, when if my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, He's talking about a people desiring God. From their heart, we need you, God. We desire you. We want you. And the thing that I found in all my years of serving God in ministry, I know pastor has witnessed this his, all the years of his ministry, is the fact is we cannot make people be passionate about God. We can teach you about God, but we cannot make your heart turn to the Lord. Only you and the Holy Ghost can. But you can examine yourself, your own heart, and say, my heart's really gotten far from the Lord. I haven't thought about Him in weeks. I haven't prayed in you know, days. I haven't worshipped. I haven't done anything. Don't condemn yourself. Get back in the Spirit. God. Get back in the Spirit. Don't condemn yourself. Get up. Get back in His presence. Get back in His presence. He bid you come. Oh, God. Just get back in His presence. You'll find He's right there waiting. <laughs> Hallelujah to Father. Yes, God. Woo! He'll never leave us or forsake us. Amen. He's just waiting. But listen, he'll have no other gods before him. That's what he's saying. If you really broke that down, that Hebrew, he's literally saying that I will not come last. <laughs> Nevertheless, when it turns to the Lord, the veil's taken away. Listen, listen. Sometimes in our, hear, hear this, sometimes in our worst moments, they might be our best days. Praise God. Because when your world's falling apart, if you don't give up, but your heart, you've got to have God. You've got to have help with your family. You've got to have a breakthrough. You're desperate. God says, ah, but your heart turned to me. Thank you, Jesus. And I didn't throw you away. I was right there waiting. It just took a lot to get you here. Amen. Amen. That's not Father's way. But he's, He'll use all things for His good, for your good. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. Hallelujah. Guess what with David? Here's really what I want to talk about tonight is that man looks on the outward appearance, God looks on the heart. Amen. Always remember that. God ain't looking at how you live and how good you're doing. He's looking on the inside, what you're thinking, what you're desiring, how you're loving, what really matters to you. That's what He's really looking at. Because He knows if you're not caring about Him anymore, He already knows your behavior is going to become bad. Father ain't worried about behavior. He's worried about heart. Do you know why He sent the flood in Noah's day? Because the heart of men were on evil continually. Amen. When the heart cannot be changed, Father must bring judgment. Never let yourself get to where you can't be changed. Never let your heart get hardened and offended and, and overwhelmed and angry and bitter. Don't let it. You can be having a bad, bad day. You can cry and get upset. You can get mad. But always know God is your answer. Did you hear what I just said? I've had days I've not been a happy man, but in my heart I knew Father was the answer. I just didn't like my circumstances. I'm, trying, I'm telling you a thing, amen? Yes. Amen. It's not about us walking around pious and religious perfect all the time. It's about our heart being perfect all the time. And it will make our character and our actions and our behavior perfect. Hallelujah, it will. Amen. All right, so where am I going? How am I going to get there? I don't know. I'm way past where I'm at. That, you're like, what does that mean? <clears throat> now the Lord is that spirit. I don't touch on this. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Y'all know the word uh, right here. Um, you know the word uh, Lord, right? What does that word mean? Y'all know the answer. It's not a trick question. Kyrios, right? Kyrios. 
It literally means one that's in ownership or one that's in full control. It means master. It means Messiah. Amen. Now, the Lord, the one that's in full control, the one that's in possession of us because our hearts turn. This is building line upon line. Your heart is turned to the Lord. The veil was removed. And now you've made him Lord. You've given him control. Listen to what he's telling us. It'll change your life. Change his mind. Now I'm giving him full control, Lord. I want you. My desires, my heart is turned to you. The veil's removed. And I know I'm not perfect. I know I got some issues. Father said, now, now that I'm Lord, my spirit is here. I told you if the veil's removed, my spirit would come, come in. The, this, is the, this is the administration of the spirit. This is how the, the instrument's applied. Your heart turns to the Lord. Your desires, your needs, your cravings, your passion for Him. And you say, He removes the veil, whatever's covering your heart, hiding your real issue. It's exposed. And you give Him control. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the what? Lord is. I said the Holy Ghost is the one that you want that He wants to be in control. The Father does. Do y'all hear me? Romans 8 tells us this, right? How He sent the Holy Ghost to search your heart and try the reins. He wants to find out if you're going to give Him access. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So if you give Him access, you just gave the Lord access. That's exciting to know that Almighty God wants to come inside of you. My Lord, not be uh, in a religious group, not be part of a, of a church and on a membership role, but Almighty God came inside me today. The Spirit of God, because I gave Him control. I gave Him access. And when I did, He took control. That's all that's saying. And guess what happens then, Casey? There's liberty. There is liberty. There is freedom. Amen? God. Amen. What is freedom? Listen to this. What is freedom? That's important. Freedom is a... I won't tell you that Greek word, but here's the point. It literally means to not only be free, but it means to be legally free. It means to be ceremonially free or clean. Here's what he was saying when he was writing that. He said... It's not you living out the law. It's when your heart turns to the Lord and you give Him, let Him take control. He removes the veil because you are passionate for Him and want to be like Him. And when you give His Spirit control, guess what He said? Then He begins to set out to bring you total liberty. That will also mean that your life will change spiritually You'll be ceremonially, spiritually, every other way, clean, able to live the life he desired. That's what that means. Oh, now I'm not condemned. Now I'm not held back by anger or unforgiveness. Now I'm not downcast or depressed. Now I'm not fearful. Now I'm not any of those things. Now I'm full of God. I'm full of hope. I'm full of victory. I think right now I can live the life of God all because of him. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Usually we're our, our biggest, you know, worst enemy. In essence, liberty is the ability to live free from all hindrances that make us ceremonially unclean and makes us, it makes us legitimate, pure, right before God and will be and able to obey and follow that which He desires for our life. Amen. This is what God's trying to bring, His glory. In the end of it, that He administers His Spirit to us so that He can manifest His glory or His presence in our life in every situation. Go to, verse, uh, go to chapter 4, verse 1 for me. I'm going to try to wrap up here in a minute so you have to hang on pretty fast here. But it's real simple. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. We'll go to verse... Uh, We'll go down a few verses. Listen to this. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, I wanted to tell you all this right now. Um, you know, sometimes people get in church, they get inspired and everything, and they say, I, I, th- I want to be in the ministry. I want to be in the ministry. All of you. And then there's others of us in the church, and we go, 
I don't want to be in no ministry. I'm not called to anything. I don't, I really, really know. I come to church. I don't really have a ministry. Yeah, you do. We all have a ministry. You can just tell in verse 1. We all have a ministry. I said we all have a ministry. Amen. What, what does that mean? Your first service is to yourself and God. Praise God. <laughs> That's important. That's that's really. Uh, um, when people begin to do these steps, and God begins to deliver and heal and set you free and everything, guess what? The church gets so powerful and vibrant. Why? Because we don't have broken people in high places. Praise God. We don't have someone addicted teaching a class. We don't have a depressed individual with our children. We have victorious people in Christ with anointing. Your first ministry is with your God and yourself. Now I ain't saying that, you know, you don't fellowship with people and all that stuff. I'm talking about our transformation happens personally between us and God and hearing His Word and all that. Therefore, we see we have this ministry. We receive mercy. Everybody always remember this. We're not pushing for perfection. We're pushing for transformation of our lives from His life. He says, but listen to this. We receive it with mercy. Do y'all know how patient God is with us? Somebody give me an amen. amen. It's mercy. Meaning this, He loves you the same every day whether you're changing or not. Right. So it's fellas, He left it totally in our, our. That's what I'm trying to say tonight. It's up to our desire and willingness to change. Father will love all of us in here the same, but He can't use us all the same. He can't manifest Himself through everybody the same. This is what it's telling us. So, so seeing we have this ministry, we do not faint. We do not faint. I used to think, you know, that word faint just meant to stop. Well, it does. But it also means this right here, to become weak, to fail. It also means to be utterly spiritless, to be wearied and exhausted. Listen, when we feel like God's not with us and we're exhausted, this is what's happening our hearts get away from the Lord. We are just serving God out of rudiments or routine. We're just doing it out of our head and not out of our spirit. We're not spending time with God getting that impartation from His Spirit that quickens this mortal body and all of that. And guess what? We begin to faint. We begin to get weak. We begin to stop doing any of this, it not transforming, all those things. Verse 2, please. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. I'm going to have to talk this to you in the next couple minutes. So here it is. Listen. Here's what he's saying. Your heart turns to the Lord and you desire Him, His presence. You don't want to be the way you've been. You want to experience more of God. You want to bring His glory into your life, into your family, into your church, into your community, the presence of God. If that's our heart and our passion, he said, the veils are moved from our heart and the Holy Spirit has full access. Nothing is hidden. Nothing's uncovered. And he comes in there and lovingly begins to, to illuminate it to us, but also illuminate the Word of God as we read the Bible. He begins to change us and transform us. And listen to what he said. At this point, you will what? Renounce. Hear me now. The word renounce means to literally speak off command or declare he's saying that you will get to the place where you say I'm not addicted anymore Thank you, Jesus. I'm not depressed Amen. I'm not sick Amen. I'm not fearful and I'm not broke yes, God. I'm not defeated I'm not weak I'm powerful Praise God. you will begin to speak off everything the enemy's been telling you when your heart was clouded did y'all get that you need to say it over yourself. I'm not that. People, we're so quick, as Pastor said earlier, we're so quick to say, well, I'll tell you what, I've been so tired. i tell you what, I've been so broke. i tell you, things have just been so hard. If we'll speak off those things where the enemy's trying to keep our heart contaminated in that place and our words keep us living in that situation. Oh, as he said right here, we kept the hidden things. Listen to this, we renounced hidden things. Now they're not hidden no more. The Holy Ghost reveals them. They're not hidden. 
Do you understand it's the things when our heart don't turn to the Lord, it's the things the enemy hides inside of us that keep us in our current situation? You know, we can only be right so long. Amen. Here's what, <laughs> that was a crazy thought. I think Richie got it. Uh, what I mean by that is, I could be right in a moment about a situation, but Brother Richie, in five minutes, Father's done moved on from it. And it ain't about me staying stuck in my rightness. It's knowing that God, even though I was right, even though it might have been a bad situation, He wants to change it. And so now, what's my heart in that situation? And so we're steady growing and changing. And, and I ain't talking about like flighty and wishy-washy. I'm talking about being molded, forged into a man, a woman, a son of God. Something stable in His presence that's not moved by every whim of doctrine or by every circumstance. We're planted in the house of God. Our character don't change. Our behavior doesn't get fouled up. Our mouth don't get bad. God help us. We've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Listen to me. Let's please get this. I mean, this is so important. I hate the, the time, but I, mm, listen to me. We lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves, church. I'm telling this lovingly. Listen to what I'm telling you. I've done it. It's like, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm not offended. You know, I'm not angry. I don't. Father goes, listen to me. I mean, you can stay like that, but you're only lying to yourself. But if I desire God's presence and the Holy Ghost to be full on the inside of me and expose my heart, then I might find out I've been lying to myself. So I'm not, I'm not worried about I'm not. Listen, it also means to be embarrassed. Listen to me. L let's go on. It says, not walking in craftiness. Not walking is the word. Walking is the word peripateo. It literally means to do something habitually or to walk in a circle. Do you know the children of Israel when they walked 40 years in the desert in a circle? That's peripateo. I think we've been by here before, boys. Y'all not going nowhere. That's just an image of it. Listen to me. He said that if our heart is messed up and we believe we're right or stuck, we're fine the way we are, and we know our heart's far from God, and we know we're not passionate for His presence, and we don't want to find out why we don't have it like we did have it. He said, you can continually, habitually do whatever you're doing, but you're going to stay stuck in the oh, same God. place. That's peripateo. Not walking in craftiness. Oh, I think I'm fine. I think I'm fine. Let's move on. Nor handling the Word of God deceitfully. That is changing it to what you want it to say. But manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I'll wrap up by saying this. I could go on and on on these verses because they're so powerful. But here's, here's all he's saying. All Paul's saying right here is this. Father has made a way that you and I can manifest God in our lives in a way that's undeniable to men. Yes, God. I feel his anointing coming in here right now. So often we defend our stance, our belief, our theology, our everything until the place we contaminate our hearts with pride or whatever it is. But the only thing I've ever found that's liberating is when I humble myself and go to the foot, we could say of the cross. But let's just say it like this. That's a fine statement, however you view it. But when you say, Father, I ain't going to lie to myself. Now, I'm not going to change your word or chase down the scripture to justify how I'm acting or feeling. I know my heart's screwed up right now. And I know you love me. Love me enough that you won't leave me like this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I know I'm going in the same circle. And every time I think I'm breaking out of it, the same circumstances happen. Now I go in the doggone circle again. Every time that happens, I lose my temper. Every time that happens, I get afraid. Every time that happens, I want to fight. Every time that happens, I want to quit and run away. 
Father said, would you please quit? In the middle of your circle, would you stop and say, Father, what's in here that shouldn't be? Because I'm tired of the circle. You want to lead me out in your presence. Changed. And I'll never face this enemy again no more. I want to go on into my promised land. I'm not afraid in my heart of the giants that may lie there. And I'm not going to make excuses for why I can't go further. I'm going to say, Father, change me. Show me my heart. Show me my fears. Show me my unforgiveness. Show me my anger. Show me my doubt. Show me my wrong thinking. Show me, Father. Because I'd rather have you than be right all by myself. Stand with me. Father, you're doing wonderful work in this church, Father. And many people, let me just speak over you tonight. Let me just speak to you. Many of you have been wonderful warriors for the Lord. But tonight He wants you to put your sword down. The battle is the Lord's. That doesn't make you vulnerable. That makes you accepting of His grace and of His mercy. Father can do what you cannot do. You have got to let go of the responsibility that it's your perfection that will bring the victory. It is not. It is His grace. But when you humble yourself and say, Father, I can't, or Father, this is where I am, really, He will meet you there and empower you and change you into the thing you've been trying to fight to become. It is an amazing way He does it in His kingdom. Mm. By His Spirit. We fight and we war and we have not. The internal fight and the struggle, we're trying to change ourselves and change our circumstances. Father simply wants you to give the Holy Ghost oh, access God. to change you from the inside and your circumstances will follow. Father, change us tonight, Holy Ghost. We desire you more than anything. Yes, Father, I pray your grace over this congregation yes, right God. now. That is new desire for your presence. I feel your grace, Father. Yes, God. I feel your supernatural grace in this place. Mm. Father God, we're going to see your grace poured out on this house. Yes, God. Father God, it's not about our perfection. It's not about, Father God, our knowledge. It's not. It's none of that. It's how good you are. It's how good you are. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of your people. Thank you, Lord, for a place that loves you, Father. Draw our hearts to you, Lord. Draw all of our hearts anew to you, Father, tonight. That we would love you first and we would love ourselves and we would love everyone else in this house and this community and everywhere we go. Father, a new grace of love would be upon us that we would walk, Father God, excited about what you're doing and going to do because you love us, not because we're perfect. But Father, at the end of the day, we will not be the same. We will be changed. But from the inside, not the outside. We'll have more compassion. We'll have more patience. We'll have more strength. We'll have more love. We'll have more kindness. We'll have more grace. Father, give it to me. Yes, God. If you're dealing with a situation tonight, give it to the Lord. Listen to me. Not just the situation, but how you feel about it. Yes, God. Give your heart to the Lord. Let Him change your heart and the situation will change. It will, because Father is the one doing the work, not you, not me. 
He's faithful. He's faithful. I call your unsaved loved ones saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. I call them delivered. I call them free in Jesus' name. Yes, Y'all join your faith with me in your love, not just your faith. Yes, join God. it with me right now. Father, we thank you for drawing in the lost and the yes, hurting, God. Father. The hours are, seem to be getting late, but the world is dark. Father, we pray that you rescue our loved ones. That's salvation, Father. Father, we do want to be a part of the plan. But if you use somebody totally different, that is fine, Father, because you're going to receive all the glory. Father, I said you'll receive all the glory. Check your heart, church. Don't ever be in a position where you've got to be the one to fix it so you'll get the credit. Don't let your heart be lifted up like that. Let's give God the glory. Let's give Him the glory. Let's give Him the glory. Father, manifest Yourself in every home in this church right now tonight. Father, may Your presence and Your love go with them. Father God, may families be united and reunited. Father God, may children that are far come from afar. Father God, and be drawn to the side. That's what will happen in the glory, in Your manifested presence. Father God, where there's lack. Father God, financially, emotionally, physically, there will be an overabundance, a wave of your provision and glory. We'll hear testimonies, Father God, of how your glory came upon me, how your presence came upon my family. And Father God, everything has changed. We give you all the glory. Yes, God. We give you all the glory. Can't you feel his glory? Can't you feel his presence? Yes, Can't you God. feel the love of God saying, I want to change it all for you? Yes, you have fought long and hard. Put your weapons down. Put your bald fist down and, and you can lift up holy hands and give it to the Father. He cares for you. He's working on your behalf. He's a loving daddy. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Father. We bless you tonight. We bless you, Lord. Receive all our glory, Father. All the glory of the Lord is yours, Father. We give it to you. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Well, that's what I have. Love one another. Hallelujah, and you have a blessed week. Hallelujah.